Josh, you're fine. You're a loop hat and this. <laughs> oh, you slid it. Ask Susan if He's I can play can I play console tennis with <laughs> Mate, is that us? Are we all live in here? We started. That's us, mate. Or go on. Yeah! What's happening, Sai? Hey, what are you doing with your barnet, Sai? Are you serious? What, mate? What are you doing with your barnet, serious? Yeah, they call me the Ginger Morelos. You look like you've got three days to live, bro. (laughs) (laughs) Slay, do you know what you look like? (laughs) Les Bartersby that was on Coronation Street. (laughs) (laughs) What the twat? (laughs) <laughs> right, lads, what's happening? Kev, how are you, big boy? Oh, sorry. How are you, mate? All right, I see that you've asked oh, your head to take your I'm just trying. I'm going to get a bit of 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 a bit 25 seconds earlier. Where's <laughs> <laughs> Kev going? <laughs> Fucking keep Kev, that's it. Who's happening, big Kev? That palmet's not getting any better, is it? <laughs> Les Battersby, what's happening, Les Battersby? <laughs> Kev, <laughs> that, like Ken Barlow as well. <laughs> Kev. <laughs> Kev, what's happening, mate? I see you bashed your hair to take a 50% cut. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Everybody's Me coming from my ball bar, sir. Me and Kev looking for Stein and Crack then, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how he's been caught in the field. What time have you done a 5k today? 5k? Josh done a 5k today. I did That's one yesterday, funny enough. This morning. What was your time, Kev? I'm, I'm going to embarrass myself, but it took me 37 minutes. <laughs> for a 5k? <laughs> I, I must admit, I did walk a bit in between. I underestimated the hills and coming old. <laughs> Never took you 37. It did. Josh, you've got to remember, I retired after playing with air seven years ago and I've not ran the length of the fucking Thanks. myself. <laughs> wow. I've actually got... What did you do, 18 minutes? Hey, at, least, at least you're out there. How, how long did it take you? 18 and a half. Fucking hell, that's terrible, isn't it? Hey, see seven. some of the times that I've seen on, on Twitter and that? Boys, Poor, eh? but none of them can control the ball. Uh, especially me. Runners don't right. make footballers. You're right, Kevin. Yeah, here you go. Listen to this. Paul Slain has went from pounding Paul Tim to pounding the pavements. He's back out running, aren't you, young man? <laughs> Correct, side. And not only pounding that side, I've been pounding that as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant, man. Josh, it's your old man's birthday today. How is he? Uh, he's alright mate I rang him this morning right and I went you see I don't really speak to him that much anyway but I've gone happy birthday he's gone yeah whatever <laughs> <laughs> didn't give a fuck oh has your dad ever went with you when you signed for a club what has your dad ever went with you when you signed for a club nah nah never never oh, bastard Slaney, Sorry, you that's some hoose you're in what my mum's <laughs> what a hoose that you are <laughs> you've been in it you damn bastard here, Sai, si, you running a hoose for the day to do this programme? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Kev, how's your diet going in the, with the corona? It's fucking, uh, I tell you what, I'm going to be some size in about three weeks' time. <laughs> Big enough to know, but I'm. <laughs> really, shows the, shows the belly. I'm going to be massive. Shows the belly, young man. Look, the belly's all right, mate. I've got two banana loaves in the oven just ready for the, when the beep's out. Right, <laughs> <laughs> What's he got there, Pyre? He sent me that, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Who did buy it? Mate, Pai sent me that to say keep up the good work. You're keeping me up through lockdown. Wow. Yeah, Josh, what uh, what you been up to? Uh, Big Charlie and Robo were saying is that you're obsessed with your dogs. Aye, they're behind me actually, just chilling. Got a better barn, it's them Slaney anyway. Get them involved. The dogs? What? They're, they're in? asleep, mate. They heard you and went straight to kit. <laughs> Oh, you know how like dogs usually, like owners usually get their dogs bollocks ripped off because they're too horny? Aye, they're both birds, but... Ch- Charlie and Robo told me that you you were that horny around your dogs that they made you get your buzz <laughs> tape off. <laughs> uh, Josh, what's happening with you, uh, Sheffield Wednesday? He's, he's off then, obviously, huh? Till the 14th, yeah, but I can't even... I, d- I don't know how it's going, to be fair, so I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. 
Wiggins. Are you going to go stay there or are you going to go back to Wigan? I'm a what, sorry? You going to stay at Sheffield Wednesday or are you going to go back to Wigan? I have no idea, to be fair. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Kev, any advice for the young man? Just play football, mate. Just no matter where you are, just get games and if you believe in your ability then you'll get the move or get the required time, whatever it is, doing what you need to do because Aye. too many footballers sit about doing nothing thinking, oh, I'll wait for that move, that move. And in this environment with coronavirus, there's not going to be much movement with money and football. So just get a club, get playing and let your ability hopefully get to get you to where you want to be. Oh, that man believes in his ability, don't you, young man? Huh? You believe in your ability, I don't know what about that. Ah, just a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> You've done well at Sheffield Wednesday too, eh? Yeah, I've only, I've only played, because obviously this virus, I've played four, four or five games, that's about it. So, and then this virus came, so it's killed me a little bit, to be honest. Yeah. I'm enjoying uh, it. Uh, people have been saying that it's going to be, you, they've took on your idea of a 14-team league. you seen that? Everyone's saying it's a great idea. I think I maybe said 16, but I'll take the credit for 14, fuck it. Um, what, is that the SPL, Kev? Aye, I think they're talking about like promoting all the teams within the right um, positions, but don't relegate anybody so that nobody kind of suffers. So I think that would work out quite well. And if the season ends up um, like only playing each other twice, then that'd be better be a anyway. Quick season, it? like it'll be a quick season next year, and then that way they can catch up for. 2021-22, but who knows? I, I, I wouldn't want to be the guy that makes the decision. I was out walking uh, with the kids the other night in the golf course and I met big uh, Maxwell, uh, what do you call him? Uh, Ian Maxwell. Ian Maxwell, the SFA, and I was like, is this you getting your head out to try and figure out what decision you're going to make? He says, no my decision, I'm passing the buck on to uh, Neil Doncaster, so <laughs> good luck, Neil. Surely, surely Scotland would be better as a, a bigger league, a bit more teams in the league anyway, no? I would, I would like to see a bigger league because I think when you look at the championship, you've got teams like Dundee, Dundee United, um, Inverness, um, but you've got also some bigger clubs in League One, like so Falkirk like and Wraith, who used to be good big clubs. Like, why not have like a 16, 18-team league and play each other twice over the course? Yeah, there's no need to play each other four times, is there? There's just no, no it's need for it. It gets a bit um, it's 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 like tedious playing four times a season. See when you're down south and you're playing, you're only playing teams twice twice a season. It's so much better, isn't it? Like see when you're in Scotland, you're playing teams four times. We used to watch the same fucking clips every time we played that same team, man. I'm like, I've seen this clip fucking four times, man. Uh, absolutely, uh, right, sorry, but the thing is, when you're playing down south twice. When you get that horrible away trip away, you're like, thank fuck we don't need to go there again. Whereas up in Scotland, you're know. like, oh, do we need to go to Ross County again in December? It's like, what's the point? And then what happened as well is, I think you end up getting the same team in the cup. So sometimes you can end up playing teams. Uh, like six, my my first season at Rangers, I think we played Celtic six times. We got many times did you win, Josh? Six. <laughs> got beat eight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tremendous man! Yeah, did you miss what on Josh? What did you miss about it? Obviously, you said about the four teams, but what is it that you, what do you what do you miss? What's better about Scottish football than, than English? The atmosphere is way better, isn't it, in Scotland? Way better, especially in the uh, in the uh, with the two for, and even like Hibs and Hearts away. To be honest, the better better atmosphere than down in England, hundred percent. So see, what? see, like, so Josh, sorry, say, si. oh, see, like, so you being a your dad obviously played in, for Aberdeen. Were you around yeah. that time when he played with Aberdeen, or were you not even born then? I don't even. No, know I was about, I was like one or two. So right, okay, yeah. so yeah. you as an Englishman coming up to Scotland. And experience the whole Hibs, Hearts, and the the Celtic, the old farms and stuff like that. Do you think the English, the English media and the English fans disrespect your game in that regard? Because like the the, the Hibs, Hearts derby is just every bit as good as any other derby you will see in the country. Or even I, down I, the I've had so many arguments with boys like at, in English teams about Scotland and the standard and all that. But I've been with like obviously I've got Char, I've played with Charlie Mulgrew, all the boys who've been down there. So they like I've back you up a little bit. But the English boys have no idea. Like right. they just think it's, they, they generally think it's publicly. Ah, that's shit that, isn't it? I don't, I don't, I don't yeah, when, they are, when their league goes, when they go tits up down there, the first thing they're looking for, or oh, can I get a move to Scotland? I'll go up to Scotland, try and reignite my career, but... Ah, but then they'd all, they'd all sign for Rangers or Celtic with a drop to that as well, if they could. Ah, <laughs> that's the one thing, isn't it? Everyone down there, they're obsessed with, they always want to know about Celtic and Rangers, don't they? Uh, if, if they, they all say it's crap, like, oh, you only scored in Scotland, or Scotland this, Scotland, but if they had a chance to go, they'd... 100% go all of them. So what, yeah, what were you on more money, Rangers or Wigan? Wigan. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been speaking to quite a lot of people. As I said, Robo, Charlie, Marcy, and all said you're an absolute top pro fitness freak. I wanted to ask you, like, obviously your dad was a complete opposite man. So you wouldn't think that, would you? Because I tweet, so apparently that means you've got a bad attitude now, doesn't it? Uh, is that what fans think of her? Because uh, you tweet and you, you do shooting stuff, it means you don't care and that don't make any sense. But, like, is it because, like, maybe the mistakes your dad made that you like that now? I don't know, everyone always asks that. Huh? Like, I've never had a drink in my life and he's nigh on alcoholic and he's where he is. <laughs> what have you been up to, young man? That was quick. <laughs> is that banana fully up? Slaney, you're having a beast, mate. Slaney is. See, to be fair, see him on mute, it's actually quite a good thing. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. There he is. He's, he's on mute here. He is on mute. That's the best thing I've ever done in open goal here. I'm on mute. Yeah. Sai! Si. What's up, man? Oh! Si. Wait, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> Two seconds, mate. <laughs> yes! Yeah. Let's hear it. Sai! <laughs> He's not even playing it. <laughs> yes, young man. Got a problem. Oh, he's slain his shoes, what you pissed for? <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> I'm on FaceTime now. Oh, he's up. All the boys. <laughs> Alright, man. Is that Susan? Oh, hey! 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 Bristol City, is it? Wait, are you joining us or are you just fucking about? What is he saying? You're just going to keep fucking about her? Are we doing the interview now? Let's go. Right, Slaney, here's a question for you. Right, mate. If the 14 team league happens, it means that champions will be champions now. There'll be no relegations and people in playoff spots just get promoted. You think that's the right idea? So I, I believe that 12 teams is far too much. Um, I think <laughs> four teams is even far too much, or say, as you know, I like to say. So I believe that that is a shocking idea. What do you think in English, Lenny? Uh, well, well, I've heard, Josh, that England are going to finish the league. Um, if they can do that, I'm sure Scotland can do it as well. And to be perfectly yeah. honest with you, I don't give two fucks about England. <laughs> Did you see the uh, National League side today? Void. No, is that Void, is Voided it? that for the start of the season. Chris Void. Aye. Oi, but sure. see, if, uh, see if that happens and certainly like, get the league, like, used to our ex-Rangers players. If you're a Rangers player, you're, you're a you know? I think... How many points think is it? 13. 13. Game in hand, two old firms, nine points could be four. If I, if I were, if it, if, it, if it reversed, Celtic wouldn't be happy. And I don't, like you, if you were the, anything to do with Rangers, you can't be happy with Celtic get, being handed the title. Don't get me I don't wrong. even think Celtic could be happy with it, really, would they? No. But then again, a title's a title. Ah, exactly. Um, Getting your bonus out, you're happy. Rain, Rangers, are, Rangers are handed in the title anyway, so they may as well just hand it over and just be done with it. Well, Kev, I'll tell you the new. As a Celtic fan and a part of the nine in a row team, it happens. I don't want to win that uh, like that, Si. I want to win it by playing the games. You can't win it like that way, Si. That'll hang your Celtic. As much as they're, they're going to win it and they deserve it, they must play that league, side behind closed doors and do it that way. Because, as I said, I'm part of the nine in a row, side That wouldn't really feel right to me. They'll never, they'll never get the credit for it, though, if they do win it like this. Yeah. I agree with you, Josh, son. I guess forgotten about I guess forgotten about after three months, didn't it? Aye, the thing is with, with Scottish football, the Rangers were out of the, the, the title, the 9 0 uh, race for, what, how many seasons? Four or five? Yeah. So, like, the law was finding an excuse as to say why it's a tainted 10 in a row or 9 in a row or whatever it is. 
So it doesn't really matter. Just give them the title, promote a couple of teams from the championship and let's have a bigger league next year and get it wrapped up before the summer and get back to normal the season afterwards. Selene. Hi, mate. I forgot what I was going to ask you then. Not a problem, Sai. Oh, if, <laughs> si, if it was empty to me above, Sai, if it was empty to me above, I've no seen any of no, like This is the question. Have you spoke to any of the other fellow nine in a row about this situation over what, Sai? Si, we had that very similar to this, Sai, si, very similar to this, this um, Zoom group chat. The, the, the nine in a row um, uh, troopers and warriors that have done the nine, Sai, si, we were in the group chat together and we sat there and spoke. Did we beat Josh Windass to our league? Yes, we did, Sai. Si. So that's exactly why I'm sitting here right now. Not a problem. <laughs> Do we want nine in a row that way, Si? No, we don't. So we want it the proper way. And if anybody's got anything else to say about that, Si, we'll sit them down and we'll discuss it further. But me and, and the leaders at Celtic, Si, and I'll tell you another one who popped his head in the chat, Si. Brendan Rogers popped his head in the chat <laughs> and say, keep it going. Yeah, so I would ask you to get your arse shaved, but I don't think the, the screen's wide enough. Show me your big briefs. Let me see them now, boy. Let me see my briefs. Lenny, what did you ask for at the barbers there? Don't you worry about that, son. I'm worried about a nine in a row. You worry about it down there. Not a half, problem. Dress for half a brownie and half a crystal fire. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Superb small cock. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, John, is that a caravan you're in? Ah, it's my mum's gaff, mate. Boy with a glove box in the car. <laughs> oh, so you've got the dogs there. Is that who Pedro was talking about when he said about the dogs in the caravan? Is it your house? I don't even know what he was talking about when he said that. I don't even know. What did he actually say? You spoke to him the other day, didn't you? I was going to try and get him on here, but you weren't having it. No, you weren't having it. So you still speak to him, huh? Ah, he texts me sometimes like if I score on that, he'll text me saying like, well done on that. He's a good guy, actually. Is he, huh? Ah, he's old, eh? He was class oh, for me. Yeah. Who, who, who did you like better, Warburton or uh, Pedro? They both played me, so if a manager plays you, you're not really asked, eh, to be honest. Yeah. George, I'm going to just step in and say, um, I believe your time at Rangers was superb. Warburton, <laughs> I believe, was excellent. Kushina <laughs> was a fraud and uh, didn't deserve to be at Rangers. He's a nice guy, though, mate. You'd like him. He's a great guy, and I would love to have met him. I do believe he's done great at Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lenny, do you ever speak to any of your ex-managers? Well, Si, I've actually been in FaceTimes with Neil Lennon a hell of a lot, Si, and that man's been absolutely superb, Si. It's superb to see his face so close up. It's a great bond those two have got, Si. Okay, what about you? Any speak to any ex-managers? <laughs> nah, sometimes I'll text the jet. Like when he had his heart attack, obviously checked to make sure he was still alive. He was okay, but um, who's that? Yeah, the Jim Jeffries. Ah, yeah. Um, but nah, Mark Roberts is obviously knowing my phone book. Uh, that was a disgrace the way you spoke about that man. Wow, I seen you on the wee face, tiny Kelso, fucking licking his ass. <laughs> hey, a little bit big, Kevy. Eh? Talking about uh, Markle, like that, eh? okay, Aye. Get back to me, your e glass. Josh, who's, the best, who's your favourite manager you've had? Um, my first one, John Coleman, probably. Ledge. Accurate and Stanley, legend. Yeah, just a great guy, to be honest. I spoke to Peter Reid about you, Kev. How do you know Peter Reid? He's at Wigan, isn't he? Is he, aye? Aye. Uh, is he still scary or is he mellowed down? Nah, nah, he's just chill, just swans about. He goes in the gym every day, to be fair. He's he 112 and goes to the gym every day. Fuck me, you two are more boring in this fucking lockdown. Slade, it's because we are talking about football. You don't know what that is. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Josh, Peter Reid's pure trendy now, isn't he? He's got the big sideies and all that. Aye, little, he wears the little hats and the long coats and that and little cigar in his mouth. Now he's on tits, isn't he? He's on tits. like a peaky blind, isn't he? <laughs> uh, you when he was when he was the manager he was quite trendy like back in the day when I was like Sunderland 98, 99 he was quite trendy come in with a wee like tight jeans and those kind of like black um, loafer slip-on things with a wee tassel buckle at the top he's the... sound to be fair he's sound I, no he is he's a great guy okay, do you ever play Arkin and Stanley? I don't think I did sign. no I don't think they were like, in the actual football league league when I was playing in England, no, well, I did. No, I was. I, I think I played in all the leagues. I played League Two, League One, Championship, Premiership. Played them all. What? I don't think I haven't played League One in Scotland. 
What is it really, huh? I think so, because I played third division with Rangers, second division with Air, and SPL with Hearts and Commander, but never played in the what would would be the championship. Yeah. I played with Dal in an England third division in Rochdale, and then Hartlepool in League One, and then Coventry Sunderland in the Championship and Sunderland in the Premiership. Tremendous. Slaney, you ever played Akin Stanley when you were at MK Dons? I don't think so, Sai. I went to a wee, what was the stadium I went to? Is it, no, I went to a few stadiums, Sai, at MK Dons. <laughs> Sai, I was only there at a small time. There was a cracker at MK Dons, I remember. It was, I was the two subs had went on, Sai, and it was the third sub about to be. So, it, it, Carol Robinson, a good friend of mine, Sai, a man that called me Luke Chadwick, <laughs> a disgrace of a human being. That's Luke Chadwick. And um, he told the two to go and warm up, Sai, and this was the third <laughs> sub. And he called the other guy upside, so I sat in the pitch as the third sub, then they got on, and the crowd booed me, side. so my time at MK Dons was a shambolic mess. <laughs> <laughs> See, Carol Robinson, I can't remember who it was, but somebody told me that the sign for Carol Robinson, and the first thing he says to them was, I guarantee that I've shagged more birds than you and drank more pints than you. <laughs> Did he, aye? Who said that, Sag? <laughs> Carol Robinson said that, but somebody signed him for MK Dons. I'm not having that to you, I think that's a big lie. Nah, he's got a bit of him, mate. He's got nah, a bit. Nah. I'm not having a manager said that, you. Nah, I am Wait, where is Accrington Stanley? Blackburn. Blackpool? Blackburn. Blackburn, is it, aye? Yeah. I, I always thought Accrington Stanley was Liverpool, nah? Nah. <laughs> oh, it's it's because you're thinking of the advert side. Mate, have you, the wee dressing room in uh, Accrington Stanley is the worst I've ever seen. A, no, uh, it's, it's going to be as bad as Bradford's. Aki's away dressing room is a disgrace. No, Bradford City's got to be the worst. Oh, Bradford is shit as well. But no, Aki's is the worst, mate. Aki's got AstroTurf. They've AstroTurf the dressing rooms. <laughs> they've, they've changed Bradford, you know. Do you know the Bradford's home dressing room from years ago? That's the aye. away one now. Is it? Aye. Aye. Because Bradford City's old away dressing room, you could only fit one skip in it and seven players. And the other, you, you did like two, two shifts. The first half got raided, then the other half came in. It was that fucking small. Wait, why don't we ask me Stuart McCall? We've Blackburn strip on. <laughs> <laughs> We've heard that you noticed, Stan, you not put any fake tan on recently? No, I sat at Kev. See, this, I'm using this time, sat at Kev, to go back to the way I used to be, mate. Do you know what I mean? So, I don't. And, mate, by the way, I've been watching a few of the open goals. How many fucking times do I say, Si? Oh, yeah, and Barrison. I like it, Tommy. Don't please, don't, don't stop it. I get happy. I know. I think I gravitate. I think I gravitate towards you. Sweeney, you look a million dollars, mate. mate I love that, brother. That means a lot coming for you. He looks like a young Arthur Shelby. That's not a bad shirt, kid. And who, who, but uh, that's only if Arthur Shelby being in a house for you. <laughs> 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 what, what runs have you been doing? 5Ks? No, sorry, I've, I've, I said to myself, I said, I'm going to get, here's a message to every Scottish team in the world. Um, I, will re- I will return to football next season. Yes. <laughs> I will, mate. Uh, listen, I've been the joker and um, I, I fuck about a lot. It's an act. It's all an act. I want to make my family proud and I will go back to the game um, when, when this period clears. I can hey, see Slaney. A Windass type player, nah? I was very similar to Windass. Um, would I say better? Aye. Um, <laughs> sexy? Maybe no, but that is no what's up. And I would say I will be back. Who are you hey, Slaney? Dean Windass or Josh Windass, Slaney? Dean Windass is one of my heroes. Honestly, I I'm aye. just saying that. One of my heroes. No, he's Dean. not. Wait, Wait, uh, 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 listen. Would Josh, I, I Josh and Dean fight George and Paul Slaney? Well, I think there'll only be two winners there, Si. The Slains would come out and talk. Yes. I agree. That could, be a, that could be the Hydro. That's a pay-per-view event, that. You're fucking bang on, by the way. Bang on. I'll let him go first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, have you got any wee bits of advice for Slain to make his comeback, Josh? The, um, freestyle, mate. Don't listen to anyone. Freestyle, oh, do some tricks. Was- I just want to go back and enjoy it. I need to, um, it's not about now, my mindset, Josh, was always to get to the very top. Um, but now it's just about enjoying it now, mate. Do you know what I mean? Maybe if you enjoyed it a bit more, you'd have got to the top. Do you know what? I, I, I'm actually going to go about all the clubs when this clears and talking to the players. And I'm going to say to all the young players, of course, take it serious. Take it 100% serious. But you've got to, you're still, 
you've still got a life outside of football. You've got to enjoy it as well. And uh, I don't mean go out and, and get drunk and all that, but go, if you have a bad session, if you have a bad game, just let it go. It's life. There's much more. This this proves that this proves that they know that there's much more things serious in football. And I think kids, uh, young kids, need to listen. Please take it serious. But can somebody step in the new? Because I am rambling on a lot of. No, you're spot on, mate. That, that was just... inspirational, that mate. That is good. Kev, any any bits of advice for young Paul Slain coming back? Well, he obviously had the potential side when he was younger and he never quite uh, hit the heights everybody thought he should have done. So I think if he keeps going to speak to Jeremy Kyle about his mental health issues... I ain't got any mental health issues, son. If he can clear his head and concentrate on the football, (laughs) I think we can see that potential (laughs) flourish. Hey, Sam, I spoke to Charlie Mulder about young Paul Slane. Yeah. What, Josh? Charlie said you was a proper player and that's serious. Listen, Josh... I, I'm going to be doing uh, Cy Ferry meets Paul Slane and the truth will all be revealed. When I come on and say I'm this and I'm that, it's so often a laugh. I was one of the greatest players Celtic have ever produced. Motherwell produced and I went to Celtic. Oh, because Josh, you take you take football seriously, don't you? Like, you're obsessed with it, aren't you? Yeah. You but have you, to be, don't you? But do you, you, to, do you, you maybe need to like, relax a wee bit more now? Nah, because nah, I do relax. I just, everything I do is... Like, me and you, we just talk about football. I just talk about we just everything to do with football, isn't it? It's, yeah. I don't see why, like we were saying last night, players who say they hate football and, all that and not ask about football, I just don't understand it. So you've never Have touched it. a drink, now? Nah, never. But that's not because of football. I'm just not asked. Right. Okay, what drink you have? He's born as fuck. <laughs> right, my, old, my old man says he's not. I'm not his son. <laughs> I actually think that your mom's had an affair somewhere because you cannot be son of Dean Windass with that attitude that will get you oh. absolutely nowhere all uh, looking like this big Kev because I look a million <laughs> you know what I mean Slaney boy you look correct my man correct son <laughs> Oi, so what you've never been for a fight with Dean Windass now no never what a waste man I don't even know his address <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, listen, I love that side as much as I say as much as I say I love a laugh and all that when I was at football side I took it very very serious it was my whole life and I dedicated every sweat and ball sack into my career <laughs> Kev did you play against him with this? Do you know what I was actually having a look last night and I was thinking when he played with Bradford I think that, I don't know what spell it was I think they might have been in League 2 and we were at the League 1 or whatever it was I think I kind of missed him but I, I'm pretty sure I played against him when he played for Middlesbrough um, in the earlier years but I kind of remember him man. He, for me like, remembering Dean Windass like he was one of the players that gave everything and was very very passionate and see obviously to score that winner in the playoffs for Hull when they got promoted man that's like that's stuff of fairy tales I mean that doesn't happen that was that was written in the stars that was meant to happen but nah Dean Windass was a proper player a character he was one of like life's Football's great characters. There's no, there's no many Dean Windasses kicking about the game these days. Correct. Did he, did he come and watch it, Josh? Um, he watched like the, he'll come watch the important games and that. But he was banned for driving for ages, so unless he got a lift, he couldn't come. How <laughs> shocking! Does he, does he came you after games? Nah, never. Nah. He'll, he'll, he'll say if I've had a base and that, but he knows that I'm, I, I don't, I'm not like, I'm not going to ring him and say, oh, I've done well when I never. I just tell him what happened in the game. It's like. Not really. We don't really. You don't put pressure on me around football ever. Yeah, no, George. Yeah. See, see. Um, obviously, I'm a kid to, to. I'm a kid. I'm a. I'm a dad to four kids, right? And my two middle kids, they're just getting into their football, right? and I've <laughs> obviously got loads of time to take them to their games and and try and help them. Did Your you know, dad obviously played football when you were growing up. Yeah. How, how did you get like? Did you get excited because he, your dad was a footballer, or did you just go about your own? Training and things like that. How did how did that happen? Because obviously, your dad no, I was like, uh, I was obsessed when I was a kid. Like, I'd go to his training sessions and that, and just like, like I was just obsessed by professional footballers. That like, I just watch them all the time and that. And like, yeah, I remember he took me training to Middlesbrough when I was like seven or something. And Terry Venables let me do a finishing session. I was about six, year, seven year old. It was fucking. Oh, it was man, class. It was my hero. But, oh, I was buzzing though. It was like I was like looking at blooming Alan Boxic and that, thinking they were Pele. So it was close. What a player he was, by the way. Have you heard yeah, his dad's story about Boxage Kid? No. I oh, don't watch the interview. I done one, but it's brilliant, man. What was his dad with Alan Boxage? Uh-huh. Oh, well, I'll have when a he look. Said, when he talks about the yacht, is it, Stan? The yacht and the birds and that, uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
Tremendous. Oh, wait a minute, guys. Yeah. Hey, go and get the, the banana loaf at the oven. Did he tell you a story about when he was um, blasting balls out of play in training? No, nah, go tell us it. He said uh, they were doing like a possession box and every time Alan Boxic got the ball, just volleyed it out the pitch. <laughs> so he said after like five minutes, obviously the boys were laughing at first, but then after a while you're like, fucking hell, I'll like, what, like, are you going to do it properly or not? And then he's kept booting balls out and uh, I think it was, might have been Steve McLaren or Venables, I can't which one it was, was like, Alan, if you're not going to do it properly, just fuck off home. And he was like, ah, finally. So, Lenny, what did you and you obviously Josh and his dad used to go to football training together? What were some of the things that you and your dad used to do when you were younger? <clears throat> so, many a times my dad would call me downstairs and tell me to call Babe Station. Yes, please, father. <laughs> 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 hey, Joshy boy, you did get out of your See why old baby station was on? Did you need to pull his hand out his sleeve for him? Is that the bad thing, Josh? Get him involved. Josh is the man. Oh, man. Right, here we go. You ready for us, teammates? Oh, you mentioned him already, big Charlie McGrew is way at Wigan. How was he? Is he still wearing uh, Pierre Cardin boxers? I don't know, I've got checked to be fair. What a guy though he is. He's a hero, isn't he? Oh, he's one of the best guys I've met. He's a legend. What was that? He's a top pro as well, by the way. Yeah. Say that again? What, what was the video you what? sent me, him in the show at? How funny was that? Brilliant, man. George, I've never seen that, Slaney. I was speaking to, sorry, George, I was speaking to Charlie last night about you, and he said, the first thing he said, mate, was, uh, a top professional. Do you know what I mean, mate? So, it, it, people all have this, always oh, a laugh, a joke, or that. Top professional, and I love that, mate. Well done. Cheers, mate. Thanks. Oi, is your man still at Sheffield Wednesday? Uh, old, boy, old boy Willie, we used to train there on a, when we played away games, we used to train at the Sheffield Wednesday training. <coughs> the old guy Who? Willie, is still there? No idea. Willie Pearson. <laughs> 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 uh, you've sent me it before, you clown. Oh, shit, sir. <laughs> yeah, bastard. <laughs> oh, so, were you speaking about Charlie last night, Slinny? Speaking to him last night. Um, I would love to get Charlie on here. Um, do a wee FaceTime with him. Should we invite him in now? Get him in. Can we get him in to replace Big Kev? Fucking up off or nothing anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Kev, Sheffy, Wednesday, you play that massive club, are I did play there. I played there a couple of times, actually. You don't realise how big a stadium Hillsborough is until you go there, eh? Yeah, it's, it's class. A cool, like, stadium. Um, who did I play there? I would have played, played a few of the other games there, but massive, massive club, eh? Yeah, it is actually one of the only ones where the atmosphere is similar to being in Scotland as well. The atmosphere is class. Majenks, so I. Hillsborough, Ellen Road. I, Ellen Road's, Ellen Road's probably, when I played in England, I would say that a way day Ellen Road was up there with probably one of the best atmospheres I've ever came across. They are. That's good. Oh, we bash Leeds 3 0 at Ellen Road. There you go, son. Not a problem, Sai. Si. He's a young yeah, man. Take that, stupid. 3 0 to go second in the league, bash them, mate. Was it David Ali this time? Si? Nah, we never went up. We finished third. <laughs> hey, Slurry, Sai was a player, when he? He diminishes himself. Well, Josh, I'm going to tell you this. I spoke to a well known um, journalist. Um, and I flipped the question on him, Josh, and he said that Sai reminded him of Iniesta. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the journalist? Who was the journalist? I will not reveal any names. <laughs> Craig the beaty boy, beaty. Sai! <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are you doing? No, nah, it was very funny, eh? <laughs> right, uh, who's, a, who's, top man, who's your top man at Sheffield Wednesday now, wee Barry Bannon? I... Baz, Baz and Fletcher's done well as well to the Scots. Baz was saying uh, he's, he's, he's a big Celtic fan, isn't he? He winds up at Celtic and Rangers. To be fair, it's, after every single game we like we play, or like I don't know if the other boys get fed up with it and just talk about Celtic and Rangers. Like we go straight on the results, look for Celtic and Rangers, and just must talk about it for an hour, two hours of the journey. And like we've got obviously got Bates here as well, so they're just um, in the group chat, just going back and forth about Celtic <laughs> and Rangers. <laughs> David Bates. 
Never heard of. Yeah, he's Aye, he's on loan at Chef Wednesday. David Bates, is he a centre half? Aye. Is he, is he from Middlesbrough or no? No, he's, he was at Rangers with me and then went the to Hamburg. The big ginger boy at the back, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> the same kind of ginger here as you, no? <laughs> George, <laughs> see the, see sure. the clubs you've played with? Is there, um, is there any matches, the pressure and the demand for the Rangers fans? I missed the last bit there. Is, see the teams you've played with? Is there any matches, the pressures that comes with playing with Rangers? No. No idea. Nothing compares to it? No, nothing. So what would you find that... if you're having a bad game at Ibrox or whatever? Um, did, did, you, did that really affect you? You don't seem to no, think that ne- 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 affect you. No, it didn't. But it's you still you're aware it's there, though. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. if, if you have a bad game and you're giving the ball away or you're missing chance in that, you can hear like the groans and stuff. But I never really let it. I think I think that's why I had most of my problems with the fans because I half like gave a bit back sometimes instead of just like carrying on with my, with the game. Do you know what I mean? Would you love to return to Rangers? No, uh, no comment. Well, listen, I, I don't know. I spoke to Gary McAllister last night, and he's a big fan, so that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah, did you find that Rangers as well? Got the pressure of playing for Rangers. Yeah, I, I don't know. It was difficult because obviously for me, we're in the third division. There shouldn't have been any pressure. You know, when you're playing against guys who are part time, semi professional, we had a full time squad, players playing big money for that. <clears> so there was no pressure to be. Under against beaten, like don't get me wrong. When we, we, we withdrew with Peter Head that first game of the season, that was, that was hard to take for some. But losing to, I think we drew or we lost to Stirling Albion away, and all you got was like fans going this, that, and the other. But you have to accept that that's where we were at the time. That's who we were up against, and it wasn't going to be playing Salem every single week. But I would imagine Rangers now in the Premiership having to beat Celtic to win a league, that pressure is completely different to the pressure that I would have. The, the, the only pressure I ever had was trying into the shorts. <laughs> we, oh, you do see, right, I swear to God, Jimmy Bell, I said to him, Look, Jimmy, I need double XL shorts or XL at best, right? And he's like, Kevin, we've got no money. We're fucking skint. We don't even have a strip. He says, you'll just get what you get. And every week, man, I would go up with a pair of medium shorts and medium fucking Rangers top. And he's like, look at the fucking size of him. It was the lowest weight I'd ever been at in my career. It was Jimmy Bell feeding me with a medium strip. I used to walk out the boot room and he'd say to me, you're coming in to fucking ask me for shorts? I used to tell Gazza to fuck off and that was it. <laughs> hey, so- he says that to me, he said that to me as well. He was like, I'd walk in in the morning, he'd look at me in disgust. He was like, Ryan Loudrop, now he was a proper number 11. You, shite, get home. <laughs> <laughs> well, I bet every morning when he put out the jelly babies on the table for the, the players coming in, he'd remove every single green jelly baby <laughs> off the table. Wow. I ah, hated it. He hated Barry the- Mackay came in one day with the brightest green boots you've ever seen in your life. And Jamie ripped all the, took all the studs out so he couldn't wear them. He's uh, he's a problem. That's Jimmy Bell. Fuck then. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, do you miss that pressure of playing for Rangers? Yeah, that's what I struggled the most with when I went to Wigan. Like we, are, the first couple weeks, I, I've told this story to a couple of my mates. We were playing Norwich away. Like I'd just gone there, so I'd only known Rangers for the last two and a half years, whatever it was. We was drawing nil nil away at Norwich, and we got in at half time. We was we hadn't had a shot. Then the boys were like, oh brilliant boys keep it going and that like we kept the crowd quiet I'm sat there thinking what, what is like that was that was horrendous <laughs> that, what, and, and the boys are like buzzing to get a point and that I, I couldn't I, right the DW is quite similar like there's more there's more people at a Peter Head game than there is at a Wigan game isn't there <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just, I, it's just a different mentality totally like I, and I'm, it's not a wrong mentality like there's no right way of wrong of running a football club it's just didn't really suit me, I didn't think. Yeah. Right, okay. On to teammates again. Uh, teammates that you'd want to avoid in a coronavirus. Not being in isolation, man. Who wants to go first? Anyone got anyone? Yes, go on, Kev. Uh, if it's teammates as in open goal, I would like to fucking hide for this guy here in the bottom right hand corner. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would uh, you know what? I'd probably I 
think the question was asked in the, the pre- last night, and I would probably see Alec Ray, even though I didn't really speak to him too much at um, Sunderland. Guy's fucking too much. Uh, what, what, angry man. Oh, angry man. <laughs> Just spits him. This is all the time. But he's, uh, nah, he's just, him and him and Alan Johnson to be fair to the two of them. Well, Alan Johnson was angry. He just, he just fucking, I don't know. Sticky was just that sticky for me. Like he was nice when you had the Monty one, but see, when a group man, he put you down in a fucking heartbeat, and you're like, God, Sticky got you leave me alone today. Really? He was, uh, yeah, he was. I wait, sorry, lads. Just before we go on, Kev's Kev bounced. Kev bounced. Superb. <laughs> That's the ratings going straight up now. <laughs> oh, Josh, what about you, a teammate that you'd want to avoid in isolation? Joey that, I want, that I want to avoid. Yeah, like an angry guy or... Who was the angriest guy at Rangers, Joey Barton? Uh, he's not angry, you know. What was he like, Josh? Honestly, he's sound, proper sound. Is he? He's, like, he's not, like, aggressive at all. Like, in training, that he'll come into you and that, but he's not, like, an angry guy. So... I, it's not like when I see stuff that he's done. Well, no, because I don't know. I don't know what went on in in his in his meeting with the gaffer and David. You know what I mean? That was like I said. That was the reason why he got suspended, weren't it? So I don't. I don't know what happened there. So seeing really training, comment. Josh. I, I don't want to be trying to mm-hmm. throw people under the bus, but seeing training, was he quite um, vocal and in the changing room, button? Yeah, like he'd be on you if you made mistakes and that. Oh fuck me. Martin, the power of the past. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but he's uh, he's doing well at Fleetwood, eh? Like, I watched a wee bit, a wee clip with the documentary, mate, and he, he speaks, it looks like he speaks really well, eh? I've spoke to a few people who've, like, been under in there, and a f- few lads who I know, they all say he's class. Uh, was he, was he a top player, Josh? Was he a top player in Rangers, or did you think he'd be better? He, he weren't there long. He was there for five games or something, wasn't he? The, the old firm was five games in, and then he, that was him then, wasn't it? What, what, is he in training in that? Do you have like, good technique in that? Yeah. Then you have better than yeah. Cantor that. But he couldn't... No, 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 no. But he couldn't even, uh, he couldn't even come to pre-season tour to America because of his uh, criminal record. So he missed all that as well. Oh, did he, right? So he was only there literally from the first game. Oh, like, Cantor, what a player is, Lenny. You like him, Nico Cantor? Oh, sorry, I thought he was... Uh, uh, just total ability. So I think even he, when he came to Rangers, he was a wee... He was, yeah, obviously the end of his career so you didn't see the best of him but he was a top player but Josh what I was going to ask you is wait do you think Warburton do you think if he'd stayed and, and get back and the money Kashina and then Stephen Jenner do you think if Warburton had been kept in he would be doing better than what, what the Rangers are doing now I don't know if they'd be doing better but he, he de- we were second quite comfortably I think when he was there so and, and he, I liked and he him didn't... I liked him a lot I, he didn't have any money to be fair to him, and then but as soon as he left, he weighed the other managers in, so it was it was a bit strange. Like as soon as he left, Pedro got a fortune to spend in it. I honestly, I liked him a lot. I thought he was he, he was a great guy. I thought he uh, he fitted the belt for a Rangers manager. I thought he was perfect for that. Um, I think if they'd backed him um, more, I think they, they they might have. I think he might have done very very well there. What do you like about him, Slaney? I just love the way. I remember he done an interview with Sai Josh and. Uh, <laughs> People always think I want to carry on. I, I couldn't stop listening to him. I thought he was Speaks so well, fascinating. He? Spoke so well. I loved his, I loved his um, ideas and thoughts in the game. I heard, I liked the way he played. I think that was maybe his one problem though, Josh. And maybe you tell me different that maybe that he only had plan A. I don't know. You may, you know better maybe. I don't know. We, we were only allowed to, I love it. We were only allowed to pass the ball, like no matter what. Uh, do you agree with that, Josh? That's the way I'd like to play if I played in a team, but there's sometimes where Hearts and Aberdeen went man for man and literally pinned us in and we were still trying to play around them and just got just got done. But Brendan Rodgers oh, is the I same, isn't it? Brendan Rodgers is the same. He never kicks the ball on and it, it worked for him. Probably a, would, you, would you say they had a better team, though? What? Would you say they had a lot better team, though? Who's a lot better team, sorry? Br- Rodgers had a lot better team than us, didn't he? Uh, that's what I'm saying. I think if you've uh, got the players that can handle the ball under pressure, then you can play like that. But like the standard of play that Rangers had at the time when you were there, you continually try to pop it a bit under pressure. Players of that level will make mistakes, now. Nah? Well, eventually, yeah, at yeah. some point. I just but, think, and I could be wrong, Josh, I, I just think that 
Well, but I, I think he was unlucky. I, I think that, that I mean, Wiki Sheena and Stephen Jenner has been back. I, I think, I think he, if he'd been back that and then he worked, then of course that's fine. You can go, but I think he was. I think he was maybe cut a wee bit earlier there. Did you get a laugh from Mark Warburton, Josh? Or was it? Can I walk, sorry. Did you get a laugh from Mark Warburton? I didn't really speak. The only time I spoke to him once was when uh, me and Nico were having that air competition and he had a go up before it. That was the only time I really. You were having a work competition? Out. So you could get our air the longest. <laughs> 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 and what did Warburton say? Get it cut. But did he never he... told Nico to get it cut. But then, I, and, but then he went, Josh, Nico's got 80 caps for Croatia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's superb. <laughs> so. What about Pedro? Could you get a laugh at him? Aye, honestly, he he was he didn't do a great job, obviously, because we all know that. But he was sound with me. Like, I think I said it to you the other day. He um, pulled me in all the time, like showing me things, trying to make me better. Whether he made me better, I don't know. Like that's for other people to judge. But he was always trying to help me, make me better, and played me every game. So that's all I could have asked for, really. Yes, Lenny, like, did you like his senior? <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, I was added in home, but. For me, he wasn't fit enough for a Rangers manager. I don't think he should have ever got the job. Some of the some of his press conferences and the stuff he came out with was ridiculous. Um, I didn't know him though, and sometimes it's unfair because when you meet somebody, your opinion changes. But certainly, what I seen of him, I don't think he was he was ever ever going to um, get back to where uh, competing against Celtic side. See, when you're going to get rid of like a, for me, a, a very good manager, Mark Warburton, you need to have like a top replacement lined up. It just seems strange that. You get rid of Martin Warren button to bring in a, an unknown guy who not. It's like it was very risky, weren't it? Looking back at it, it's risky, isn't it? Yeah. Josh, can I just ask? See, Warburton was he? Um, did they have a serious side him? Like, could he go through, boys? Nah. See, but that, that, I think I think you need that. There you go. Yeah, uh, I think that was his. But he had boys in the dressing room who could like handle that for him in a way. Like Lee Wallace and Kenny, in a way, would have to do that for him. Do you know if if. But obviously, it needs to come from him more, more than it. So, well, so he can he'd never can you like shout, but if he was speaking here, you'd listen. Do you know what I mean? One of yeah. them. He's intense, isn't he? Lee, great lad, though. Yeah, he's a top guy. I think he's class as well. Oh, what a player, mate. He's a Rolls Royce, man. Yeah, I think he's a ledge. Rolls Royce. Uh, see, with Pedro, mate, like, see, with the canyon, like, the things that, certain things that he would say because he was born, like, we would pure, you'd push yourself laughing at. Was it, was it the same with uh, Kishinia? Uh, it's, he, he had a word called hab- habitude. What for attitude? Your habits and your attitude, but he co- combined it together. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody's habitude's got to be spot on. <laughs> and he had it in like big words on the uh, on the projector. See, like the sort of stuff he would say in the press about the caravans and the dogs and that, would he give you similar sort of... Uh, similar stuff to See, I, st- I still don't even know what that means. Nah. Do you? Nah. So, Lenny, you got you know what that means. What is the word? Sorry, I wasn't listening, Si. What is it? When the dog keeps barking, the caravan keeps moving. Aye. What Shagging. does that mean, Slaney? Shaggy, no. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't got a clue, boys. Well, Google it, then. <laughs> we'll Google it now. <laughs> Where is he? Is he away? Do that. He's still there. The I'm, just, I'm just checking this when the dog... What? <laughs> <laughs> when the dog barks, the caravan keeps moving. The caravan keeps moving. Right, let me see what it comes up on Google. <coughs> it must be a quote. He had a few quotes, actually, didn't he? Well, do you, do you remember any others now? Would you say them in the dressing room now? <coughs> nah, nah, not really. What did you think of him, sir? Who, Kishinya? Huh? No, get that off me. Nah, yeah. Probably. He's just not a Rangers manager, is he? Like the ones that we've grown up. I just thought his recruitment was. I know he got Alfredo and Daniel who did who did well, but. Oh, was it him who brought Morelos in? I am Ryan Jack, to be fair. So I'll take that back. His recruitment was absolutely outstanding. <laughs> <laughs> so love Ryan Jack, don't you? You think Ryan Jack's top player? I'm a huge Ryan Jack fan. Yeah, huge. What about you, saying Did you like him? I think, George, I think you've caught me off guard there now you're the, the, the presenter and I'm absolutely all over the place. But certainly, Josh, I think Ryan Jack's, uh, I think he's great. And I think, I think this season he's really, really stepped up. Um, unfortunately, after they came back for Christmas, 
the rest of the boys didn't he? But certainly, Jack, I, I think he's um, he's really. I'm actually surprised. I, I thought when he first went to the Rangers, I've always knew he was a good player, but I thought he was. Um, I didn't know if he was that level. And uh, he I was the is. same. I was the same when we played against him and we signed him. I was like, but then I re- then in training you realise how good he is. Well, what, what, what is he? What's he? What's he good at? But he never loses the ball, ever. I know, but listen, he doesn't lose the ball. But Rangers have got the ball all the time. I I know you're, you're not having him, are you? No, I, I like him, but I think at thirty four, Steve Davis is a better player at thirty four. She passes Steve the ball. Steve Davis ball. is top, though, isn't he? Yeah, but I'm saying like if you you're saying that J- Jack's top, I think Davis at thirty four is better. Just because I think Davis passes the ball forward a lot more, eh? I think that's Rangers been Rangers' problem after January that midfield doesn't pass the ball forward quick enough. What would be your midfield three? Midfield three for Rangers would be Jack, Aribo, and Davis. Uh, I think they should go. I, I say to you the right. I thought Rangers should have went three five two at the back. I don't think their two full backs are great defensively. I think they're better mm-hmm. as wing backs. I don't think they've got two centre halves who are good enough to play the two. Hence the reason I go three, and I think you get Kent off of Morelos, you get more chance of scoring goals. There you go, there's my take on it, Slaney. What are you saying about that, young man? I love it, Sai. You know how much uh, I know we have a laugh, but I love listening to you when you're serious, mate. It gets me excited. He's good, isn't he? <laughs> Kent, Kent was drift wide, though. That's a, that's a great way free, this. Wait, Jen, 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 Kent would drift wide. If you did that system, he'd find himself on the left, 100%. I know, but on replay to the middle, he'd find himself on the left. <laughs> I know, but he's Terry on race, eh? <laughs> right, young man. Right, what about you then? What do you, think, what, what do you think Rangers' problem have been since January? Obviously, I know you watch a lot of them. Um, but it was just the same as... It, it seemed like when I was there, and I was like, the, the Livingston's away, isn't that? They just, they're just struggling against the teams that are... like We've always struggled against Kilmarnock, always. And even then, this, this year's the same, and last year, I just don't know what it is. I don't actually know, to be honest. By the way... There's one one thing that could beat the coronavirus. Livingston on AstroTurf would beat the coronavirus, wouldn't he, young man? And, and right, Gary won't just smash his bus right in about it. Right. He's busting his boys. Gary Holt just spit it everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but seriously, you just said that, like, the play, you struggled against Livy, Kilmarnock. Like, why is that? Because, see, they're players, they weren't struggling with their games before January, were they? Uh, honestly, though, it sounds... Ridiculous, but that pitch at Kilmarnock is so hard to play on. You have to concentrate on controlling the ball. I, I don't like it. I don't like that from me either. Like you're not think you're not thinking subconsciously. You're actually thinking how to control the ball because it, it's that bobbly and that bad. The Astro. Yeah. So anyway, uh, uh, this might sound. I, I don't know if I should say it or no, but I think that if the season kept going on the way it was going on, I think Gerard. It was, he was really struggling. It really, really was. I thought he was going to say, get the sack there. There you go, Jack. There's a question. Do you think he would have got the season would have went on? Do you think, is this a good break for Steven Gerrard or a bad bad break? I would say good. Why? Because it kind of deflects off of how they were doing. Because uh, they went from, as we all know what happened in January, I, I just think that they couldn't, they were struggling to win any game. Yeah. Any game. So I don't know. The, I, um, he's done well. He's done well, though, hasn't he? He has done well. Uh, so why do you think he's done well? He's at two cup competitions. He's thirteen points by Celtic. So ha- how's he done well? Uh, you've, you've absolutely murdered me there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, he's, he's changed like the the mentality and the philosophy of the club. I think. Yeah, I'll agree I agree with that. I, I don't know if he's obviously what you've just said is like you can't really back that up. But I think in terms of the mentality of the group and the training and stuff like that, I think it's changed a lot. And Europe, they've done well in Europe as well. They've done really well in Europe, to be fair. Yeah, but obviously, at, at Christmas, everybody probably thought Rangers were going to win the league. Yeah. And I know it's, I know it's only sick, but I just think watching that game at Christmas and what they're doing now, I, I don't actually know what's happening. So see, see, see uh, if the, obviously the win nothing at the end of the season, Slaney, would you stick with Jeff? <laughs> I don't think it's, I don't think you can. I, I, you can't go two seasons. I mean, it's, no, no, I don't think you can. Say, I really don't. Can they spend any more money though? They spend. You know what I mean? It's like you can't just keep spending, can you? I yeah. know, but you're a, you're the, 
we're talking about Glasgow Rangers here. Um, it's no see if they were competing for the league and, and they were close to winning the league and Celtic won it. That's fine. There's signs of improvement. I don't see signs of improvement. I don't. Last year the league was done by February. This year it's done again. This is nothing to do with Celtic. They do still have to play them twice though. I know, but people keep saying. I keep on hearing people saying that they're still to play. Celtic are still to play. Celtic have won. I think Celtic won two old for them this year. Um, and Rangers have won one. Is that right? Yeah. What I'm saying is they keep going on about these two old firms. Celtic have won more old firms this season than Rangers, so I don't know. Okay. Uh, Josh, you just under on Gerard. Uh, like you say the standards that he's brought in that drink that I just suited that just suited you obviously don't you you're, you're obsessed with standards and things getting done right. You think you'd enjoyed playing under Gerard? I, I did enjoy it when I was there so I was there with him for quite a little bit. Because obviously we had the whole qualifying campaign and then I played the first game against Aberdeen and then Left on deadline day. Yeah. So I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was, I still. Um, Could you see straight away like the standards that he was demanding? Like it was, it was much higher than previous managers. Yeah, just for like the fitness and that everybody was so. The running and that was unbelievable. Everyone was so fit. And uh, they pressed like mad, don't they? Yeah. And your man Slaney loves Michael Beale, didn't you, Slaney? Good, isn't he? I've heard, I, I, I've heard he's a brilliant coach, but some of the stuff he's been coming out with recently has bamboozled my brain. He said that the league should start in 19 games in. So I don't know if Michael Beale's been drinking here this period or no, but I'm not sure. But he has a, I heard he's a very good coach. Can you confirm <laughs> that? No, he's good. He's very good. What, what, what sort of stuff does he do? Is it opposition, high tempo stuff, Josh? Uh, it's all relative, though. We don't, they don't just train. Do you know what I mean? They don't they train. Take it for, a uh, it's all relative to what obviously the manager wants to play and how he wants to do it. Right, mate, we need to ask you about your twin, uh, Penner. How is he? <laughs> <laughs> He's mad him. He's is mad. He, have you any stories for us? I don't, he didn't really speak English, he just used to bowl around laughing. <laughs> <laughs> him and Alfredo were joined at the hip, though. Oh, were they mates, were they? Huh? Aye, proper. Did he like well, I think he like Morelos. Apparently, he's different. Like when I was there, like he, he just went about. Like, I don't think he got sent off once when I was there. No, nah. not once. What, what but then you? apparently now, now he's like the main player, and that apparently is a little bit different. So I don't actually know. Did uh, did Pen and Morelos did they go out quite a bit? I heard, I heard they did, but I. I Obviously, didn't speak to him because obviously they're English. But I've, I heard from a few people that had seen him out in that. So, anyway, that'd be a good two for you to hang about with Penna and Morelos. I would love to get Morelos in this chat right now. He's somebody that I would love to hang about beside. He'd be so funny on hearing him. Can he speak English? I, I, I reckon he can, you know. He just chooses not to. He doesn't that. do interviews and that, does that. he? He can't have been there. How long has he been there now, Sai? Three years. Three years, Morelos, I heard. I'm not having he can't speak English. Josh, Josh, see Morelos, do you think he could play top? What do you, what do you, just, what do you define as top, like Man United? Like Premier League, like I would say Who's top six you? Premier League. Spurs, just say Arsenal. Um, no, you I, can't I, pick Arsenal. I, I don't think he's an Arsenal player. You'd have to, you'd have to put, but then the, how many players have you seen where you probably don't think they are, but then they go and they rip it up? Do you know what I mean? It's different styles to different players, don't they? I, I reckon he'd score in a lot of teams. What would you explain? Do you think he could play for an Arsenal? Tottenham? I, maybe no. Like, I, I don't, I didn't, when I say to Spurs, I didn't really mean to that. I'm just meaning the, the, the standards with the top six in, uh, top six in England. Um, before, I would have definitely said before Christmas, I, I would have said so. Um, He's a handful for anyone, isn't he? But I, I like him a lot. I, I think he's top. I thought he was very, very good. Um, and I don't know what's happened to him again. It's, it's the full team that's the problem. But I don't know. I think he is. I think he's very, very good. Outside the top six in England, maybe, but the top six, you need to be able to like the play. And you need to be so much more than just a goal scorer, didn't you? Like, look at Firmino, other people. They've got him on every this year. He doesn't nah, that's, he's, cr that's cream of the crop, though, isn't it? The, the others yeah, are not like... Yeah, I think like he's top six. Who's top six now? Josh, what was he like in England? Uh, what was he like uh, in training? Well, Chef U are top six and he plays for Chef U. Good point. Nah, but they're not, a top, they're not one of the big top six clubs in England, are they? 
No, but he plays for Yankee Sheffield. Plays, Yankee plays for Sheffield United, huh? All day. Oh, all day. <laughs> <laughs> Twice on a Sunday, Slaney, boy. Well said, my man. So, well, Yankee's better than Big Mike Burnley? I don't know if he's better nope. or not. I just think he plays. Yeah. He plays alongside Mick Burnley. Oh. By the way, who did cut your hair? Just shows that to the side again. No, the other side, you clown. Slaney, what have you done then? Who cut that? Myself. <laughs> Sorry, boys. Do the rest now. Famous. Do the rest now. <laughs> Josh, he's listening to this. I was actually speaking to Charlie last night and I said to him, he said, how are you enjoying the fame? And I said to him, I'm struggling with it. And I said, I'm, because you, the, the greats, Josh, all the greats have a dark side. Like, and I said to him about Johnny Cash, used to lie in his bed, greeting after every gig. And he, Charlie called it, Charlie called, said Vincent van Gogh cut his ear off. So what I'm saying is, as much as I'm getting famous, it's, it comes at a price as well. well what are you going to do, cut your ear off? I'm not, <laughs> no, I don't know why I told that story, Sai. Si. I'm certainly well, not going to cut my ear off. What's the price? Eh? You said fame comes at a price. I'm asking what the price is. 250 grand for the hydro, son. That's what it is. Not a <laughs> <no> problem. <laughs> Oi, have, you, have you spent that hydro money? It's been cancelled. It's been put back. Oh, mate, imagine that doesn't go ahead. I've spent on it. <laughs> what did you get? Oh, you got that new flare. Can we see your new flare? I'll show you the flare now. What are you doing? See, you've got a bit of celebrity Susan taking you about the cupboards. Look what my yeah. shoes like. MTV Cribs. <laughs> Much of this, Lenny. Stay. <laughs> Stay. Mate, Big Kev, has he left the chat? He's left his feet in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know what I guess. The changes that have come over me. Come on, the NHS! Fuck the virus! <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing, man. Right, last week, lads, we're talking about boredom. Uh, just now, obviously, so boredom in the house. Josh, best pranks it. You've obviously been about pre season trips away that are very boring. Uh, any good pranks or wind ups that you've seen? <laughs> Just, just when I was at Aki and that really, because they were just, they were just mad. Them boys, crazy. What? All the scouts and that, but none of them give a fuck, do they? So they just do mad shit. Uh-huh. I've seen a, do you remember Jordan Musto? Yes, was that Middlesbrough? Aye, he was just sat in a shower and boys were just pelting eggs at his face. <laughs> it was unbelievable. <laughs> do you like Slaney? See that again? Sorry, it's fucking jumpy here. Sorry, my fucking. And they're like shambles, man. Listen to this, young man. This is something you did. One of the boys are just sat in the shower. And the, the rest of the boys are just pelting eggs at his face. <laughs> 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 that happened to you with the bricks, didn't it? <laughs> Sorry. Aye, my man. That happened to you, didn't it? The boys are throwing, throwing bricks at your face. <laughs> that side. Throwing <laughs> that. <laughs> Hey, this virus is mental, though, isn't it? It's like good. Oh, honestly, boys, that, that's fine. Do you know how it puts things into perspective? Honestly, the, the real heroes out there working every day, but it just shows you that you've got to take life very, very serious. You don't see all the wee things that you bother about through the, through the full year and you bother about this and that. It means fuck all. The, this is the real problems and the real heroes out there. And I, I, if they want me to do a video each day to keep them entertained, I will do it for them. Yeah, that's a great idea by you. Thanks, did the thanks. clap? Did, did you do the clap the other night at eight o'clock? Absolutely. I was Different screaming class, at the for them. Screaming at. Are you singing? Did you see the boy in Cobra singing? Did you see the boy in Cobra singing Elvis on his balcony? No way. I did. I did. You see he that? did. No. So what about you? About pranks, mate. Pranks. Oh, tell that one, Sai. Si. Tell that one. What about the wee boy in Dundee? That's magic, mate. We did a podcast last week and uh, I told a couple of stories about Dundee and the guy that I always used to do stuff with, Kev McBride, texted us saying, you forgot about the one with the wee youth team boy. So we were, we were always late at Dundee. Training started at half ten. We used to get in at like five past ten, get changed quick and then go along to breakfast quickly. So this day, we're sitting at breakfast and uh, the team coach come running through and says, the first team goal is... 
no well, he's not going to train the day. Points to the youth team goalie, he's a wee fat guy, Bona. Um, and he says to him, you're training with the first team today. So me and Barra shout him over at the first team table. He's sitting, he thinks he's like Billy Big Bollocks. And we go to him, right, Bona, we'll give you 20 quid each and you can eat 20 kilograms in two minutes. Now, it, the young boys at Dundee were on like 30 quid a week. Skint, man. He used to be obsessed with money, we Bona. He took the challenge, right? Mate, he nailed 20 yogurts in two minutes. 40 quid a game. <laughs> Mate, we get into the training and he's training with the first team first time. Two minutes in, he spews his ring every year. <laughs> <laughs> but the goalie coaches at breakfast and seen him eating the yogurts, I went off his tits at him, man. <laughs> Never to be seen again. Oh, it's magic time. Nah, that was the end of him, mate. So oh, it's another, it. another young player off. That's fucking Wait, What about you, Prank Tenny, now? Well, Sai, I remember, I remember we were away with Scotland under 19s, and um, it's not really a prank. So I ran, I ran into John Fleck in Grant Adams' room, ball naked, and um, it wasn't really a, pra- pra- a, a, a prank, Sai. I just thought to myself, I'm going to run in here and scare these two um, into shivering wrecks. But what happened was the two of them picked me up, I was ball naked, and uh, the two of them picked me up and put me out in the balcony and locked the balcony over, Sai. So I was sitting there ball naked in this hotel. And, every, and I was hiding behind a wee wall, ball up naked side. And as you know, my piece downstairs does not do wonders for me. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that, John Fleck and Grant Adams? <laughs> John Fleck and Grant Adams. I wasn't going to mention Grant Adams, he's not big enough, but John Fleck certainly is. <laughs> mate, Granny Adams is off, he's not in it. Oh, mate, what a keeper he was, by the way. Uh, mate, what about him kicking it? That's Charlie Adams' brother, Josh. Was he good? He was at Rangers at high, he was a good keeper, wasn't he? Sorry. Josh, we're going to try and get Charlie Adam on um, next. It'd be great for you to come on as well, mate. I actually think it's a great balance for you, Owen. Um, I think I'm a bit, I had a bit of composure, don't I? A bit of composure I had, I think. I think you're great, Josh. You started, um, you came for me at the start, and that is why I carried on. My signal was bad. It was not bad at all. I had to regroup, and I came back in. And you're actually a very intelligent young man. <laughs> yes, that. Right, last question, lads. The best manager that you can get a laugh with? Uh, best manager you could get a lot you're meaning that who did he say he's gone is he gone is he gone on yours as well nah, he's gone mate uh-huh. no I'm no right. <laughs> there you are right come on what manager get a best, the best laugh with so I'd probably I would have to probably say um you probably have to go with Carol Robinson. So I remember we we uh, played a game on a Saturday, and we it was a away game, and we came back with the bus, and we got dropped off at the MK Don Stadium at ten pa- um, ten past eleven, and my mum and sister were up visiting and watching me play. So I didn't play one minute. That isn't the end of the story. So I <laughs> said to I said to one of the boys, I said, "Do you know where's good to good for me, my man, sister? It was late for food." Carol Robinson said. Um, Took his knees motor into the tune and said, That's a lovely wee place there, Si. He took us to a nightclub and you don't believe this, Si. He took us to a nightclub. He got out the motor and came in with me, my man, my sister, and Carol Robinson standing in a nightclub together. Not a problem, Carol. Would I love to slap Carol Robinson's ass? Yes. <laughs> Unreal, man. I'm going fucking mad in here. You've been sensational all day, young man. Thank you very much, Sai. Does it a good laugh? Sai, what about you, mate? Uh, the Canio was funny, mate. The Canio was funny. Uh, he's another wait. story, Sai. Please, mate. No, because I need to keep him for the hydro, his funny stories. Oh, fuck, aye, 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 aye. I'll okay. tell you one story, too. This is not funny, but it just sums up like the kind of guy is. We, uh, we had a guy called Oliver Risser, right? He was our captain. Never heard of him. Than anyone at start, exactly. <laughs> 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 and... Uh, he was hopeless, right? So the canio put him out on loan to Stevenage. And remember, there was that rule that um, if he played for a team on loan, he couldn't play against them. Uh, yeah, yeah. The canio spent the full week trying to convince the FA to let Oliver Reeser play against them. <laughs> <laughs> he told the game was, he's like, lad, we have no worries today. Fucking Oliver Reeser is playing for them. <laughs> Did you <laughs> win? Magic, say, Magic, man. What about you, Josh? Probably, probably James Beatty, my first one. Oh, hero James Beatty. Aye, great guy. Oh, did he not batter Tony Pulis? 
I think I've heard it's like a I've heard that a naked scrap actually in the in the shower. I heard wow. that as well. He's pulling pills his pants here. He's not. <laughs> I heard he wrapped his balls around his neck. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what was that? Yeah. Is Beatty funny? Fly oh. me to the moon <laughs> and let me play amongst the stars. Did, uh, did Beatty have a few big time shows? Uh, a little bit like his technique and that was class during training, so he'd like, he'd celebrate when he scored and that. That was free kick. You've, you've killed it then. Huh? No, 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 you won a story, mate. You won a story, mate, it was a fact. <laughs> <laughs> you must have won me Kishina. We didn't, we didn't win about I think it was like 10, first 10 games of the season, I don't think we won, like bottom of the league. And he just said to the boys, listen, everyone, there's a minibus waiting for us and we all just went tiger, tiger and just got, everyone just got, obviously I never, but everyone just got blitzed and just, and then the day after, you had to stand up in front of everybody and tell stories about the, the, the if you was with a bird or not. Oh, oh yeah. superb, man. What what the, what, Kishina, he must have a story on though. Wait, wait, so, what were you going to say there? Do you remember Michael Liddell or... And any of these boys. So him Michael and a guy Lidl? called Liddle, he was at Sunderland. Nah. So him and the guy called George went back to this bird's house or something. And they ended up having a scrap in this bird's house over the bird. <laughs> <laughs> what, they <laughs> fight <laughs> <laughs> so they had to re- they had to reenact the scrap in front of the gaffer. Yes, love that. Nah, it was funny. Slaney and Gregory Vigna had a fight over a bird as well. the best ever. Gregory Vigna, he's, he's, he's the one at Rangers now, isn't he? The, the woman's coach. Yeah. yeah. Oh, don't get that man started on him. His name's Dan. He's a shambles, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, that plus. No, nah, boys, don't go, man. That's shite. I'm fucking nothing today. We're flying here. Fly me to the moon. <laughs> and let me play among the stars. Let me tell you the Jupiter of Mars and all of us. Slaney, what's your thoughts on this? What my brother's just made? Oh, look at that. Ah, oh, super Absolutely son. Absolutely hopeless. What is that? Better, what is it? Pepper's lettuce. Pepper's Fucking lettuce. Throw pasta, that in the tuna. That looks minging. Throw that in the floor right now. I've just put it in the Brilliant. dog's cage. <laughs> yeah, look, boys. Who's that? Oh, look at that. The champ. Sorry. Three toes. <laughs> is, that, is that Picasso? <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm off. Hey, boys. Boys, hang in there. Thanks, boys. Go on, lads. Stay safe. Applause to the NHS. Well done. Yes. Yeah. See you in a bit, guys. Cheers, lads. Thanks. Cheers. Thanks.